Microelectric reels. Chances are you're gonna spend a thousand bucks on the wrong thing. Don't wanna waste your money. Watch this video. Welcome to the Johnny Jigs warehouse. Let's crack this box open. I'm gonna show you guys what's inside of it, give you a few specs on it, and show you how to program it and spool it. Come on guys. All right guys, we're gonna unbox this Daiwa Seaborg G300J. And so whenever you receive it in the mail or wherever you buy it, it's gonna look like this. And it does have some information on the back as well as on the side about how much line you could fit onto the spool, gear ratio, and things of that nature. So let's pop this baby open and see what's inside. First thing you're gonna notice is some paperwork. One of these is safety instructions and some handling instructions, but I'm gonna give you just a little piece of important information that is on this instruction manual and that's cleaning the reel. So what it suggests is that you don't spray water into the reel. Water and electronics don't mix well. They ask that you just spritz the reel lightly or you can use a damp cloth and wipe it down and then oil the mechanical parts. Do not oil the electronic parts. It's not a good idea. As we dig a little deeper into this, just a little soft bag that you could stick the reel in for traveling and carry it around with you. And then on the other side is something important. It's this little tiny metal rod. And I'm gonna show you the importance of that as we spool this reel. Digging further into the box, it does come with a power cord. So you don't have to worry about buying a power cord, but I can tell you from years of experience on the water with these reels, it's not a bad idea to have a backup one. This seems to be the first thing that goes bad on the water. Very simple, it just screws into the bottom of the reel. These two clips right here clip right onto your battery. Some guys will cut these off and put different connectors on them to connect them to different batteries. But for the batteries that we sell here at the shop, this is a perfect connection. The one that goes across your chest, hangs on your side, you clip it right on and you're good to go. So that's the alligator clips. So let's dig in a little bit deeper until we find what we came for, the electric reel. So it comes in a nice soft bag. Daiwa packs this up very nicely. It's not a cheap piece of equipment. So, you know, they definitely doll it up a bit and let you know that you should uh, take care of this thing. And there it is, guys. That's the G300J Seaborg out of the box. And I'm gonna dig into a lot of the features later on in this video. But for now, we're gonna spool this baby up. Come on in. Taking the line and sticking it through here and trying to get it into that little tiny hole that's in there is almost impossible. So that's what this little wire guy does. So what I like to do is come in through the back of the reel and I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to show you guys, but you can see I just kind of feed that through the hole. And then on the end of this is a little loop. So if, as long as you pull enough of the line off, you could hook that loop right through the metal part and then just pull it back towards you. Very simple to get this through and out the other side. So now that's a critical part because if you do not go through that loop, it's going to pack the line all to one side of the reel and you are going to find yourself in a big, big mess out on the water. And I have seen anglers do that before. So I know you're probably thinking to yourself, that's crazy. Who does that? Well, let me tell you, I've seen it done before. So I'm just going to do a pretty basic uni knot here. Loop. So the cool thing about a lot of the Daiwa reels is it has this little knob that is on the spool and you can do a uni knot, hold the line right over that knot so it grabs it and then you just cinch it down. You don't have to tie around the spool. 
per se, and that's it. It's done. So I'm gonna remove that tag end, and we're gonna start spooling. So using like an old rod, it makes it easier to control the reel while you're spooling it. So we've got this old Temple Reef rod that one of our customers broke. So we just salvage it, keep it right here. And it just helps me to stay stable as we're winding because it starts to want to bump on you and, and move back and forth. So now I'm just going to plug in the reel and on the plug, there is a little nodule. So this only goes in one way. It's only going to work one way for you. And then the reel automatically powers on. This reel is new. So I'm gonna have to go into the power mode. You can see that everything on there is in Japanese right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scroll down using the speed control until I see something that looks familiar to me like the word language. And there it is. And press okay. I'm gonna go down to English. There's a bunch of languages here. Press OK. And I'm gonna go into this one more time. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down. You can see everything is in English and I'm gonna go through these settings with you in a little bit. But I wanna fix one thing while I'm here at the spooling table. And that is because here in the States, we use feet instead of meters. We're using the American standard system. Um, not the metric. So I'm going to press OK on that. Make sure that my spooler is set at zero. And now I'm going to go back into the menu one more time. And the first thing that's in the menu is line data input. That's where you want to be at. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to get into line data input. It's asking me to start. I'm going to say, yes, I want to start. When line is known, so the length is known. So I know how long my line is here because I have a counter that is on this spooling machine. You may not have that at home. I would highly recommend going to your local tackle shop or stopping by Johnny Jig's tackle shop in Pompano Beach and let the boys spool it up for you. You may have to coach your local tackle shop through spooling this reel just because they may have never done this reel in particular before, but after watching this video, you're gonna know how to do it. So line length is known. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna press okay. So now you'll see this gauge pops up, right? And there's a minus, there's a plus, and then there's a little sweet spot right in the middle where this little arrow needs to stay as you're spooling. And what that is, it's gauging the tension of the line as it goes into the reel. And I'm fortunate that having this line spooler, I have a tensioner right here. So I can actually just hold on to this reel, keep the tension going, and make sure that we spool this properly. Generally, the more line you put onto the reel, it's you start to loosen it up a little bit. So let's give this a go, guys. You can hear how this thing sounds. All right guys, so I have 600 yards of line on the reel. And now I'm gonna show you guys what you do next. So you wanna press the okay button right here, and then it's gonna bring you into line length. Unfortunately, this is still in meters. So I have 600 yards and I need to tell the reel how much line I put on this spool. So you can scroll up and it gets you into the next number and you could scroll down so you want to get it up to that number. So I don't know what 600 yards is in meters. So I do what everybody else would do. Oh, Google, what is 600 yards in meters? 600 yards is equivalent to 548.64 meters. 548. So I'm going to go up to 550, which is going to be the closest deal that we can get to right there. And I'm going to press OK, right at 550, press OK. And essentially at this point, your reel is spooled. All you need is a top shot, put it on a rod and get on the water and start fishing.
check it out guys. I'm gonna run you through the 300, the 400, the 500 size Daiwa Seaborg, the uses, a lot of the functions that these reels have built inside of them, and what I would recommend for you in different circumstances. First up guys, you're gonna notice that these reels have a 300J or they have a G300J or 400 or 500, plug the number in there as you want. And the G is a better motor. That's the only difference between the regular J and the G. So what I mean by a better motor is that it's a little bit stronger, more durable, it's gonna be a superior motor from one to the other. And maybe it's better magnets, maybe it's got a little more copper inside. I can't tell you the exact details of it. All I know is Daiwa has put out that the motor is better, therefore that's why it costs more money. Chances are it's gonna last you longer and that's the idea of it. So I'm gonna run you through what do all the buttons do mechanically on this reel. And first thing that you'll notice is that it's a star drag. So you can just tighten it up very easily right here or loosen it, same way. Very simple star drag. Everybody knows a star drag. There's nothing unfamiliar about that. To release the bail, it's this button right here. So now I'm in free spool. You'll notice that as soon as I push that button, this other button popped up because that gives you a quick and easy way to engage. So free spool, engaged. There's another way to engage. So if I go into free spool, you also have the auto engage. You could just turn the handle and boom, you're in action. So as soon as you tap bottom, you could get that quick pop off the bottom by either pushing that button there or turning the handle, one or the other. Next thing is, that's your motor control. So it just rolls, it rolls up, it rolls down. So as soon as you go all the way down, you've completely turned off the motor and disengaged the motor. Rolling it up, it does have a variable speed. So as you hook into a fish, you wanna ease into this motor. A lot of times I start out by just reeling the handle so I can get a feel for if the fish is pulling drag, what's going on, and then I ease into the motor, that way I'm not pulling hooks. The next thing you'll notice is this little knob on the side. So as you're in free spool, this essentially is like a drag while you're in free spool. So you can slow down the descent of your lure by tightening it or loosening it. So here's a little nugget from Johnny Jake's team to you guys. That's a power handle. So I have replaced the knob that comes with the traditional G300J and I put a power handle on it. It just fits better in the hand. And if you order one of these from us at johnnyjakes.com and you order the knob with it, if you leave a little note and say, hey guys, can you put the power handle on? We'll do it for free. So this is a Gomex's power handle. This just adds a level of comfort when you're on the water and it's something that I enjoy having. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. But having it on there, it just feels like a real SPJ reel and it's what I like to use. So the sizes, you have the 300, the 400, the 500, it even goes up to 1200. But talking about the smaller electrics, we usually stick to the three, four, or 500. And I'm gonna show you the size difference between the three of these being in my hand and what I think the uses are for. So we can kick it off with this 300J. It's actually a G300J. And what you can notice is that this fits very nicely in the palm of my hand. It's very light. I'm able to use this all day long without getting tired. It's a very convenient reel. It's not cumbersome by any means. As you can see in this clip here, I have caught monster fish on this reel. Holy crap, I need a gap. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, see what we just got, baby. Oh my word. That is the biggest damn doof I've ever caught in my life. Holy cow, dude! Whoa, bro! Yeah, dude! Oh, I can't even get him over the side! Do you want me to put the camera no, down? No, hey, dude, keep that camera rolling! Have you guys seen anything like that before? Yeah, baby! Woo! Mr. Grouper, boys! That is the biggest damn group I've ever caught in my life! Holy 
fuck? So what's the uses of the electric reels, right? I know some of you are, can possibly be sitting at home and say, hey, why don't you just stay home and play video games? I've heard all of the comments about electric reels. In reality, and just to kind of give you an understanding of why we use these reels at times, number one, for somebody who's disabled, this is very convenient because not only can they go into free spool, but they can engage with one hand. It's something that can be very helpful for someone who has some sort of disability that hinders them from being able to reel up a fish with both hands. The next thing is, there's a lot of guys who like to fish that are getting older. They don't wanna be out of the game. They love it, they're passionate about it just like I am, but they cannot keep up with the younger guys and being able to deep drop and therefore they get into deep waters and they're sitting down and doing nothing. This keeps them in the game and fishing. In addition to that, for the guys who like to go out grocery shopping, the meat haul, when you're going out to put food in the fridge for your family, this keeps you in the water longer and also cuts out from you being fatigued. You could fish all day long and reel up from 800 to 1,000 feet and not have an issue. So for this 300 size, 20 pound test, Berkeley X9 is what we put on it usually. You know, Zuri has a new 20 pound that's colored that goes well with this reel, but we're using 20 pound because we want it super thin so we can get down into deep water. I would even suggest bumping it up to 30 if you plan on using this reel in 500 or less feet. It's not a problem, but as far as the 20 pound test go, you could fit about 600 yards on this reel which means that you'll be able to fish this 300 out in about a thousand feet i'm not saying you're gonna have a ton of line left once you tap bottom on a thousand but it will operate for you in a thousand feet with 20 pound test so let's switch out this 300 for the 400 i'm gonna pop this guy off and slide on the 400. this one's kind of cool because it's not much of a difference in size comparison these two side by side, you can barely notice the difference in size. So with the 300, you could fit 600 yards of 20 pound test. On the 400, due to the wider spool and the depth of the spool, you could actually fit 700 yards of 20 pound test. It's getting you out there a little bit deeper. What's the benefit of this? Aside from going deeper, you could lose half your spool and still be able to tap bottom at 800 feet. You're gonna be sitting in a good position. So function wise, it's basically the same as the 300. It's just a little bit wider, but in reality, this guy still fits very nicely in your hand. You can see here, this is the knob that they actually come with instead of the upgraded knob that I have on my personal 300. The buttons look exactly the same. The function's exactly the same. There's no difference in this reel, except for you're getting a little more line capacity. So when you go from the 400 to the 500, that's when things change a little bit. Let's take this guy off. Let's put this one on. For me personally, by the time I get to this size here, I'm getting a little bit out of my comfort zone of how big of a reel I would like to have in my hand while jigging. Once again, you go up to the 500 size, you're gonna add 100 yards of line and you're gonna add a lot of size and a couple more functions. First one being this button right here. I wonder if anybody could guess what that button does. It's basically a second gear. It's a power gear. So you flick that switch, it's gonna slow the motor down and it's gonna turn to a different gear to hoist up larger fish. The next thing is, instead of just having the little rolling knob there, you actually have a paddle right here that you can move up and down. Other than that, the functions and the buttons work the same. It's the three buttons, which I'm gonna dig into for you. And it's the same drag, same knob, different color, a little bit bigger. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone for jigging, but it will work. So let's take a look at all three of these reels next to each other, just so you can have an idea of which one you would wanna pick out. There's a big difference between this guy and this guy but these two are pretty minimal. I wouldn't mind fishing either of these. I've been fishing this one for years. I don't think that there's anybody in the US who has put more time on the water than the Johnny Jigs team on these reels here. 
we know them pretty well. So guys, as far as matching a rod up, these guys will sit in any real seat that's on a slow pitch rod. You could pick any rod. But what we use them for primarily and what my experience is with these reels is for deep dropping. And when I say deep dropping, I'm talking about 500 foot plus. Granted, these things are multi-purpose. You can use them for bait. You could put them on your bait rod and drop them down. But what we use them for primarily is deep water. So for deep water, the rods that we're using and the one that's in my hand and actually the one that I caught that huge Mystic Grouper on, this is our new lineup of Pro Jigger rods. And this one is actually a Power 6. This guy is coming out this summer and we have a whole lineup of these that this reel will match to. The other ones for deep drop jigging that we love matching them up with is the Elementus Deep by Ocean Legacy. That rod has some high ratings from 500, 700, 1000, and it will work all of those size gram jigs. So really whenever you're picking out a slow pitch rod, you're looking at the gram rating on it and you're matching that to what depth you're fishing and what size jig that you're gonna be using. So can you fish a thousand gram jig with one of these 300 size reels? Absolutely, I've done it. I'm generally in between 500 and 800 grams with this and I fish them constantly and it's not a problem. Some of the things that you don't wanna do with these reels mistakes that people have made is that while you're trying to engage with the auto engage a lot of people will keep their thumb accidentally on this spool disengage button here and you start getting that clicking sound and you're messing up your reel the next thing is Daiwa suggests that you don't cast with these things we don't cast per se like this but we do pitch the lure out you need to be careful if you are pitching a jig out because what can happen is you could accidentally press this button and the jig comes back at you or you can accidentally turn the handle and engage it and the jig comes back at you so if you are pitching the jig not casting pitching the jig then you want to be careful that you don't engage it the next big mistake that guys make let's say you get cut off and you lose about 300 yards off of your spool you've lost half your spool, right? You could still fish with it, you could still get back down. But a mistake that guys make is that they forget to thread it through the little loop right there. If you don't, you're gonna end up packing your line all to one side of the reel. It's gonna be a big mess and you're not gonna wanna deal with it. And here's a big one, listen up closely. A lot of guys will lose a couple hundred yards, go ahead and tie their new leader on and drop back down without pressing the reset button right there. So you need to reset it to zero once you have lost line. Otherwise, guess what happens? You're gonna reel that jig right through the tip of your reel. It's gonna look like one of the cartoon cigars that explode in people's faces. It's not gonna be a pretty sight. It's something that you definitely don't want to forget to do is reset that button. Don't make that mistake. I've seen it done too many times. It's terrible. All right, guys, this is a section where we're gonna get in close to the reel. I'm gonna show you some of the cool functions that this reel can do. First thing, guys, is this reset button right here. This is the one you're gonna to wanna to push if you lose line and make sure that you reset it, otherwise you're gonna reel your jig into the rod. So let's get into the features of these Seaborg reels. You're gonna to wanna to know that you press the pickup button and the memo button at the same time, and it's gonna give you a little beep, and then you know that you're in the menu. First thing on the menu is the line data input. That's where we went in order to spool the reel up. That is the only thing that that menu item does is helps you spool the reel up. Next one down is the sub counter. This is kind of interesting because you could tap bottom and know that you're at a certain depth and then it, you reel up and as you're reeling up, it will tell you how far off of the bottom you have reeled and let you know how far back down you need to go. So if you're trying to stay within 10 feet from the bottom, the reel is gonna let you know that you're 10 feet from the bottom and you'll know exactly when to drop back down. The next thing is the auto stop. This is an important feature that's on the reel. And what this does is you can program it to give you the 
depth at which the lure or the bait or whatever you're fishing will stop and then you reel the rest of the way manually up so in other words you drop to the bottom you're reeling back up to check your bait or just retrieve your jig and what it's going to do it's either going to stop at that six seven or eight foot that you have it programmed that i think you could even go up to 15 i'm not, not sure the highest number but i like to keep it kind of tight with the jigs i don't want to reel as much uh, whenever i'm just retrieving a heavy jig next feature on this thing is probably the coolest one and that is the jigging mode there's a couple modes on there and you could set it to do a uniform movement to where it's just reeling up a certain amount and then bouncing back down, reeling up, bouncing back down. It's a very interesting, it does not release the bail, but it does actually put a flex on the rod, stops reeling, and then the rod does the work of flicking the jig. And you can also mix it up to where it's either reeling in a different amount of line each time and it can mix up the cadence within it. So the jigging mode is something interesting to play with. I haven't messed with it much, but it is an interesting feature that will work and catch fish. Short winding mode, I'm gonna skip past that. It's not a feature that I use. I'm not familiar with it. So I don't wanna give you guys any bad information, but I can tell you the next one down, drag sound. So I like the drag sound. It puts you in a little bit of ESPN mode to where it's making a beeping noise as the drag goes out. And it also lets you know that you can back off of the motor a bit while the drag is going out and then increase the motor again. Even though this reel does have a clutch disengaged, so as a fish is pulling line out, the motor's still gonna be running, but it disengages from actually trying to spin the spool. But you're gonna burn battery, so it's better to back down on the knob there to where you disengage the motor while the drag's going out. You'll get that beeping noise and then you'll be able to go ahead and ease back onto the fish as he stops pulling drag. The depth alarm will let you know whenever you have hit a certain depth and then reeled up and then gone back down to that depth. I think this feature is nice for the auto jigging because if you're just trying to work the top 300 feet of the water column and you've got this guy sitting in a rod holder, you'll be able to release the bail, let it fall out freely while you're doing whatever it is. And then when the depth alarm goes off, engage the reel and put it into the auto jigging mode. So the fixed speed, you're gonna be able to set how fast this reel will retrieve the line so you're not anxious and hitting it too hard and pulling hooks you can actually slow down the speed or set the speed to a certain amount that you want in order to be able to catch a fish chum timer this one's interesting so if you're fishing bait on these reels which you absolutely can do the chum timer will actually set a stopwatch so once you have dropped the bait to the bottom engage the reel all of a sudden a timer is going to start and let you know how long your bait has been sitting on the bottom so once you get to that 10 to 15 minutes of soaking a bait you're going to know it every time and be able to retrieve it and go ahead and switch that bait out i'm uncertain of the fucus mode or the depth revision the history i would imagine is going to give you some sort of memory inside of the reel of history of adjustments and what you have done probably the first thing you're going to do whenever you get this reel is that you're going to go into the menu go down to the language selection and go ahead and put it in the language that you're most comfortable with and then the last thing is the units so you can switch it from meters to feet and that basically sums up the functions of this reel there is so much technology this little thing it's unbelievable but it will definitely help and assist you in having a good time on the water